Ever since the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, there have been many people who made their mark on British railways. And now on YouTube, one rail enthusiast from the Staffordshire town of Rugeley, who is passionate about the trains and making his own mark on the railways too, give his own opinions about the railways today, the history and the future and gives you a behind the scenes of how to get to their destinations to do what I love best, build trains. Good morning and welcome to Rooty Trade Valley. I'm your host Simon Paul and this is um, another British Railway Journeys for the Cyber Trade YouTube account. As I mentioned we're at Rooty Trade Valley and go back to Shildon today. I know we did do one in January when um, I went up there for the um, Shildon trip to see the Deltic Prototype 1. Okay, did have a bit of a uh, controversial to it but um, while I was up there I did actually learn a lesson of something. You see, you always learn something new every day. That in your Shilden, case, never at all. What did you say? Nothing. Nothing. That um, Shildon is the original part of the stock to the Darlington Railway and Bishop's Auckland, Auckland or somewhere up there. I think it's Bishop's Auckland. Bishop Auckland. We'll find out when we get there anyway. But what the thing was, when I went up there last time, I thought Stockton and Darlington Railway is just Stockton to Darlington, not Stockton, Darlington, Bishop's Auckland. Auckland. But no, I know where uh, Darlington North Road was the original stop to the Darlington Railway Terminus. So I have learned something new from that last trip anyway. But today, it's been, well, patience, patience, patience until today. Because um, back in the 60s, there's a guy called Richard Beechin. Mm. Uh, Dr. Beechin. <laughs> when he came into um, power of British Railways and helped them out, well, you know what his reputation is. But also, he decided to donate two A4s to the USA and Canada. You bastard. So, excuse the language. Now, what the thing was, he said, Dwight D. Eisenhower, 60008. No, uh, yeah, you can carry on. To, um, up north. To America. That would be the uh, the Chester Voyager that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, six zero zero ten to the really Canada to Canada, of course. And they've been up there for about forty years now. No longer. No. Today we'll make history because we're going to see them today. And we're not taking an airplane to Canada or the US either. They're at Shildon. I'll explain more later at Tamworth. On today's leg of the journey, I hate these. Wondering if I could get a seat on this. And two A4s from North America and Canada, respectively. I love these. In the future video, though. 350 103. This will take us to December. Tamworth, one of my favourite places on the um, West Coast Bay Line. I like to come here a lot to film and take photos. I've probably mentioned it there before, but I'll mention it again. Um, unfortunately, since this trip was unplanned, this trip was going to happen, but I didn't know what day it was going to be on until these two A4s arrived in Children. That's a cross-country turbo star, even I can tell you that for definite. 
um, is that... Are you sure? One, two... Oh, yes, it is cross country. It's basically... Um, I'm going to say that. Oh, oh, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Anyway, yeah, right. Um, Penzo. Sixteen. Penzo sixteen. I'd like to ruin the video. There, I'll tell you how it is. It's ruined my video. Anyway, ruin my concentration as well. But no, seriously. Um, unfortunately, with the um, short notice of this trip, I haven't got done my notes properly, so I can't tell you exactly when this station was built. Blah blah blah, and all that. When this station was built, rebuilt. All I can tell you is that there used to be a platform extended from there to there before uh, they modernised in the early 2000s. Now, this platform here is for the London Midland trains and some peak Virgin trains. Same with the other side. You get your hourly crew, Houston's coming to stop in here. And then the high level, you get, your hour, you get two cross-country services to Nottingham. One goes to Birmingham, the other goes to Cardiff. And then your cross-country services which stop here regularly. Not often, but there is enough for to get to places like we're doing today. You also get a Derby stopper that stops here late as well. And the Derby stopper. But no, um, we are going to be on the 9.36 to um, Derby and then we've got 10 minute connection time for the 10.10. Basically the same train like we did last in uh, January to Shieldon. To, um, and then we'll wait to Darlington for a bit, I'll speak then and then move on to Shieldon. But no, um, unfortunately though, we went to get our tickets for this um, train that we're going to cash out 936. As you can see here, there's a hundred quid's worth of rail vouchers in here. It's all London Midlands fault. This is the times that London Midland, Virgin and other companies have fucked up with their services and I've got my money back off them. I'd like, I'd like to suggest that the majority is London Midlands. Possibly, we don't know. There, there is one first Great Western voucher in there, I definitely know that for a fact. Anyway. So, um, so all the times there'd be cancellations, delays, I've been building them up. So there's a hundred quid here for me and my cameraman. Trains of not run because drivers okay, can't Okay, we get asked. the message. But um, went to use them to get our tickets, and we said, "Oh, you have to come back at 0915. even though we are actually trying on the 0936, Apparently, there's ticket restrictions. Yeah, there would be what? ticket restrictions. No, there isn't because you could probably use a 60 to 25 rail car, which I don't have on me. You could use it this time for this. So she's talking out of her ass, to be honest. Oh, there's a word, hold on. Um... She's talking out of her ass because, to be honest, I think you can use it, but she's being a bit of a job's worth about it. Job's <coughs> worth, yes. But no, we've still got plenty of time, so. We've still got time to get our tickets anyway. She said half night there, I wouldn't tell her half off. Well, you wouldn't have told her to F off, but... Well, it would have been gone down so well, because unfortunately, we missed a connecting train. We're fucked. Day ruined. S excuse my language. I'm trying not to swear in future of these documentaries, but unfortunately, it's how I feel. How I feel, unfortunately. I'm trying to give you facts and tell you like it is. That's what I'm going to try and do. But no, um, so we're here at Tamworth, and we'll just go wait for our train. Oh, 173.98, Lancy's Turbo.
then East Coast and Express East Coast and now East Coast. So you can just hear past wait five in here. And we've still got that part of the now, we're just waiting for our train to finish the Falkland. And we speak more when we're there. No, I'm saying I'm very all right. All right. All right. Now right at um, Shildon, and as you can see, right in front of us is why we came. The two long lost A4s that came from America and Canada. We'll explain more about, more about them in a minute. But no, we're also here for a few other things as well. See what's around and all that. Not just see a DP1, mind you, that, that's here, so... Now you tell me! <laughs> anyway, let's go enjoy ourselves.
I'm recording now. As you can see, he's a bit busy here. You see, this is what he's called writing up a report of the day. Right now, as she'll do, we've been here for a couple of hours. And um, as you saw, the A4 falls down there. The Canadians, though, have not looked after that A4. It is rusty as hell. It's not the A4's fault, that's these, the A4's done nothing wrong. The Canadians, how they mistreated it. What's that all about? Yeah, what's that all about? We gave you A4, donated it to you. Very nicely. And you do that. But no, so basically, the Dominion Canada dried the ice now, down there at the moment, sitting in the sun. The, the Americans have kept that A4 in good condition. But um built the Shielded Station. Apparently the Shielded Station is on the Stockton and Darlington Northwest in North East England, which it is. Because this was the part of the original um, railway for the Stockton and Darlington. Uh, with the Tower Shielded in County Down, built by Timmy Hatworth. Well yeah man. Station of the Tees Valley Line, which is operated by Northern Rail, they run to the Fish of Auckland. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there's a single box behind me. The station's just a bit further down there, as you can see. So, two platforms, a bit I'll, like Rushi Town, but. I'll just zoom in to show you. Briefly zoom in, it's just there, the, the platform. Yeah. And um, so, basically, it's just basic bus shelters, all that. You don't get very often trains here running, but um, about every two hours roughly. Also, just a quick history of the A Force down there. Dwight D. Eisenhower was laid 4496 Golden Shuttle on the 4th of September 1937. In 1945, it was relayed to Dwight D. Eisenhower with the LER number. And then in 1940. Eight. It was six o o o eight. Dwight D Eisenhower. Withdrawal the twentieth July nineteen sixty three, and um, went to the National Rail Road Museum in Green Bay, Wisconsin, in uh, nineteen sixty four. At that time, though, the Dominion of Canada was still really got um, services up to Aberdeen and all that, but. Um, it was at 4498 Dominion of Canada, 24th of May 1937 it was built, works number 1854, was supposed to be named Buzzard. <laughs> but um, I don't think they liked the idea. It was named Woodcock at one point <laughs> when they were doing trials and all that, but before it entered service they thought we were named Dominion of Canada. <sighs> As a CRP type bell when it was first when it's in service. You'll see that next year because they're going to restore um, 60010 into its 1930s livery with the bell, the single chimney. They removed the bell when they installed the double chimney. 60010 was actually withdrawn in Darlington Shed. Left there for a while, when Darlington Shed closed, they thought, right, take it to Prue, restore it, and then um, on the 29th of May 1965 got donated to the Canadians, the Canucks, who did look after the A4 and should not actually get it back. And we now ask, what the Canuck? But unfortunately they have to get it back because it's only on here on loan. And it's on the National Canadian Railway Museum in Montreal. 
well was until it came here. I think we should start off an appeal up, mm. keep them here. But um, there was one person that made this all come true, that was Steve Davis, the, the manager of the National Railway Museum in York. It was his idea, and we applaud him for it. We thank you. His brainwave, he's the man who did it, brought these A4s home. And you should have a special thank you for this, because we don't thought we were ever going to see them again until now. Good birthday present from Mallow. Mm -hmm. She'll wake up there and she'll say, hey. She'll see all the all the rest of them. If, if you don't know, next year Mallard's gonna have... I was gonna mention that later. Okay.
Yeah. We're working to get a nice place. We're now on a class 222 Meridian, which is one of my favourite units, better for the voyages and the super voyages that cross country use. On the East Midlands Trade Service, 1827 to London St Pancras, we're going to go as far as Derby on this. So basically, it's like sit back, enjoy the ride on the Meridian. Um, Tamworth, West Coast Bay Line and all that and um, since I told you it was a surprise trip this morning as such and it was unexpected and no notes so I managed to find some while I was on the train and well it just went back on itself um, opened in 1839 by the Birmingham Derby Railway but it was that high level that was open first <sighs> then in 1847 the LWR decided Oh, we've built a line onto here, so <sighs> that's when the low level comes in. And then it was rebuilt in 1962 to, with, with the West Coast Main Line oh, modernisation. But so they had to raise the bridge down there up by two feet, so they could just fit the wires through. Brilliant engineering. But no, anyway, so we waited here now for the last Desirio. Class 352 Rouge Trump Valley, there's something in the distance. This one goes to crew, this is the 1829 out Houston. Gets here for half past eight. Sometimes late. It'll be packed. Yeah, it will be packed as well. And uh, this goes to crew where stopping at Stafford. Stand well back from the platform. And this is a fast the next train 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 going through. Platform one does not stop here.
Right, we're back at Moose Trip Bay now. We just uh, got off our trailer and managed to fill the 1651. They actually weren't the London Big Blood 30 to type now. <laughs> it's this 110 miles per hour thing because um, basically they can do this a lot quicker now so they can actually run on time instead of arriving here three minutes late and all that. So it's really helped it out a little bit. There is uh, some changes on this route from December onwards. But that's from December. Well, I could spoil it now because I know what, exactly what's going to happen. Go on then. Basically, spoilers. Your usually London trains from this platform three. It's going to be 7:48, then 8:55, then 10:04, 11:04, 12:04, 1:04, 2:04, 3:04, 4:04, 5:04, 6:04, 7:04, 8:04, 9:04, 10:04, 11:04, 12:04, 1:04, 2:04, 3:04, 4:04, 5:04, 
That is an absolute joke and I hope they get rid of that because it's wrong. I hope Virgin take over the East Coast Main Line. Well, we don't know. But, the, but that is absolutely wrong. Stand... what? So you got to stand up in first class and you still get paid a first class fare. They do that on London Midland where they declassify first class. Although there's one incident of that everyone standing... Standard passengers were standing in first class one time. And they don't even declassify it and nothing happened. It's a joke East Coast. Sort it out. So we got back to Sheffield. We got back to Doncaster. They were on a class 144 pacer to Sheffield. Your fault. They were on the East Midlands train to class 222 to Derby. We were going to have something to eat in Derby, but they decided to shut down the uh, chip shop we were going to. Yes, it was a nice place. And, well, we still had nothing to eat since about one o'clock. And, um, got back to Tamworth, and now we're back here. So, uh, thank you for watching. You can subscribe to us via Twitter. You have Facebook. Twitter? Yes, I have Twitter. <laughs> Yes, I have Twitter, and I have Facebook as well, and um, well, that's it for this show. Our next one will be a London one, which will be a two-nighter, so it will be a little bigger than this one. And all we've got to say now is good night. We're now approaching Maniboat Station. Oh, well, it's actually not a hotel, it's a pub. <laughs>